Hi guys, welcome back to the day 9 of learning Unreal Engine. So I hope you are enjoying this series so far. And in today's video, we are going to learn about Movie Render Queue, how you can render out your animations using Movie Render Queue or how you can and uh, render out your still images using Movie Render Queue. So let's start now. As you guys remember, we learned in day 8 how we can animate the cameras using Sequencer. So now let's move forward with that. So let's just go to our sequencer and let's just open the master shot sequencer. If you remember, we created this master shot in the last uh, video and let's just preview this here. And you remember we created this two, three, four and this four cameras basically. So now let's start with our render here. Okay. So in order to render out your image or your uh, animation, you need to have movie render queue enabled in your plugins. So how you can enable it? Just go to edit, go to plugins and type here movie render queue. And you can see by default it is turned on in this scene. But if you are, if your movie render queue is not displayed or is not enabled, just enable the movie render queue plugin. And you can also enable the movie render queue additional passes, but we are going to cover that in future videos. So don't worry about this. Now let's just close this here and now let's start with movie render queue. So click here and you will see movie render queue will uh, open by default. But if it doesn't just click here and make sure it is set to movie render queue. Now let's just click here. And let's just click on settings. Now this movie render queue settings is what I used. Uh, it varies from person to person and requirements to requirements. But I find this useful and I have been following William Fosher and uh, Unreal Sensei. They explained it really well that how movie render queues work. Okay. I use some console commands along with anti-aliasing and that's it. And if I want to do color grading, I use the color, uh, color output basically with EXR sequence. Okay. So let's just start with EXR sequence. Now, why you should you should use a JPG and why you should use EXR? Okay. So let's say if you are doing some quick renders to show to clients or to visualize yourself that how animation is looking, then go for JPG or PNG sequence. But if you are want to color grade your footage in the post process application like After Effects, New DaVinci Resolve. Then I would uh, suggest you to do EXR because EXR had lot have lot more values for highlight, shadows, and color. So that's why I would recommend EXR sequence. Okay. So let's just delete this here by pressing the delete key. Now let's just go to settings and we are first going to add the EXR sequence. Now as soon as you do it, you will find that there is a compression. And there are lots of options here. Just leave it to default. You don't need to change anything here. Now let's just click on settings here. And we are going to add here what we call color output. Now just make sure guys that if you are going to color grade your footage in post process, then only enable this or else you don't need to use it. If you want that what you look in viewport should render out perfectly like that. Just make sure to turn this off. Okay. So if you want to color grade, then only turn it on. Right now, I'm going to delete it because I want to show you guys how you can do it. Okay. But if you want, just go to miscellaneous and make sure that disable tonal curve is on. So it will disable the tonal curve and you will get a raw output. Okay. But I don't want to use it. So I will just turn it off from here. Now just click here again. Now we are going to add game overrides. Okay. Just click on it. I will explain what is game overrides. Now let's say you want to render your uh, shots that you have created in a cinematic quality. Okay. If you guys remember, I told you that when you click on settings, you will find the engine scalability settings here. Okay. By default, if you turn on the cinematic, you will find that, okay, your uh, screen is lagging a bit and all that stuff. Okay, but it improves the shadow quality, it improves the texture quality and all that stuff behind the scene. Okay, so when you turn on this op go game overrides option, it will just make sure that you are using a cinematic quality settings here. Okay, by default, then it will make sure that if you are using LODs for the grass or for trees or for any other object, if you are using LODs, it will make sure that it gets the highest quality of LODs in the scene by uh, making sure that this option is turned on. It is also going to make sure that it uses the high quality shadows as well. 
okay so by default it will turn all the high quality settings for you guys with the help of game override option okay now let's just move to another tab which is important for motion blur and that is anti-aliasing let's just click on settings here and let's just click on anti-aliasing anti-aliasing or anti-aliasing um i uh, sorry for my pronunciation but here you will find there are two main options here one is spatial sample count and second one is temporal sample count okay now william forsher explained it really well uh, that i am also using from last one to two years with the help of unreal sensei youtube channel okay they both explained that if you want motion blur increase the temporal sample count if you don't want motion blur and you want crisp renders increase the spatial sample count it's that easy okay now how you can do it let me show you so if you click here okay you can see how many frames should we accumulate together before contributing to one overall sample this improves the anti-aliasing quality so you will not get that much jagged edges okay don't leave this to one by one and render it out because it is not going to look good okay now here if you click over here you can see it basically um, helps with the what we say uh, motion blur okay how many frames will be in the motion blur so let's say your ball is going from here to here and there is a motion blur in between how many frames you want to render it okay so if you render 8 you can you will see the circles there but if you render with 16 samples or 28 samples or 31 samples okay then it is going to look really smooth so if you want motion blur to work really smoothly increase the temporal sample count so let's just increase this okay and increase it to a odd value so let's just do 17 here or maybe 19 okay let's just start with 17 here now what will happen it will uh, basically uh, render your frame 17 times one frame will render 17 times here okay now there is an option here you will get a error message that if you are using this high temporal count above 8 you need to make sure that override anti-aliasing quality should be turned on. So by default, it, uh, Unreal Engine is using anti-aliasing method, but we don't want to use it. We want to use our settings. So just make sure that you turn this on here. Now, there is one more thing that I want to cover is render warm-up frames. So sometimes what happens when you render the sequence, no, there would be some shadows and lights in some first like 10 to 15 frames then the lumen lighting will settle and then you will get some really good stable lighting this happens with lot of you guys okay it happens you because there is no render warm-up frames before the render starts so what i would recommend if you face that issue then just make sure that you have some render warm-up frames before rendering the actual frames or if you are using some volumetrics uh, like fire particles or all that stuff i would recommend just render up some warm-up frames here so you can do that as well let me just click here and just go to advance and now here it will ask how much render warm-up count you want for the engine and for the render okay by default it is good value of 32 by 32 but it depends on scene by scene so you need to render at least like uh, one seconds or two seconds animation in order to see what works for you okay right now i'm going to go for 32 by 32 and that's it anti-aliasing is covered here now the last thing that i'm going to cover is uh, console variables so just click on settings here again and just go to console variable as soon as you click here uh, these are all the console variables that you use in your scene. So let's say if you are using a uh, foliage distance, then you need to add it in your console variable as well. If you are using, let's say, motion blur quality or depth of field quality or tone map, uh, tone mapper sharpening or tone mapper, then you need to make sure that you use that in console variables. So whatever commands that you are using here, no, in your scene, you need to make sure that if you want to apply that to your uh, or render as well you need to add it into your console variable okay now there is like two to three commands that i generally use okay so just click on the plus here and what i prefer i use the screen percentage so if you remember we have used this in the previous days where we rendered the still image by clicking the high resolution screenshot okay so what happens what is screen percentage 
So let me show you how this screen percentage works. So let's just type here R dot screen percentage and just press enter. Okay. By default, the value is set to 100. So let me explain you. If you go to output, you can see the resolution here is 1920 by 1080. So when you do a 100% console variable of screen percentage, it will render in 1920 into 1080. But let's say if I do 200 here and render it out. So what it will do? It will render in 1920 into 1080, but it will pack a 2K render into 1920 into 1080. So what I am telling Unreal Engine, just double the quality here like 2K and pack it into 1920 into 1080. So this is the one command that I generally use. I take it from 140 to 160 to 180 to 200 depending on the scene that I am working on and depending on the how close my camera is to the textures, I work for that as well. So let's just start with 140 here. Now there are two more console commands that I generally use is depth of field quality. So just click here. And you can type here r dot depth of field. Okay. And for quality here, you can see zero is by default turned on. One is the low quality. Two is a high quality. Three is very high quality, which uh, intended for non real time cutscenes like ours, where we are using depth of field and all that stuff. So we are going to go for three here. Okay. So let's just type three here. And if you want to have some motion blur quality as well, control as well, you can add that as well. Okay. But let's just uh, keep it till here. Okay. And let's just now go to output. So these are all the settings that you need to do when you are doing some really good uh, renders from the animation. Yeah. You can take this anti-aliasing quality to let's say 64 as well or 63 as well. But only take it when you are uh, having some really fast motion blur like car animation or maybe someone is running really fast then only take the temporal sample count to 64. Now let's just go to output and here you will define what resolution you want. So I'm going to keep it to 1920 to 1080 and here you need to define which folder you want to render it out. So I'm just going to keep it in my content folder only not in my content folder though. I'm just going to make sure that it's here and I'm going to name it to render. Okay. And then I'm going to select my folder. But before clicking on accept, I'm going to make sure that I save this preset here so I can use it again and again for my final quality renders. Okay. So just click here and save preset and just make sure that you save it somewhere that you remember. Right now I'm going to save it into content only and I'm going to name it to final render config movie render queue and let's just save it okay and now click on accept and just start the render local and once you start it it will compile the shaders and it will start to render your whole sequence here okay so let's just click on render local and wait for the render to finish so this is how easy it is to uh, render your scenes with the help of movie render queue I hope you guys learned something new with the help of movie render queue. What you can do, you can render out still images, you can render out animation. Just make sure that what you want, you want temporal uh, for motion blur or you don't want temporal, then you the spatial. Okay, so that's it for this uh, video. In the next video, we are going to continue this series with the how you can use the displacement in Unreal Engine. Then we are going to move to physics. Then we are going to move to animation, advanced stuff. And lots of things are planned for the rest of the series. But I'm going to switch to Unreal Engine 5.6 from next video. Because Unreal Engine 5.6 is released. We are also going to cover Meta Human as well. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Share it with your friends who wants to learn Unreal Engine and are new to it. Please press that like button. And uh, I will see you next time. Till then, bye bye. Take care guys.